Welcome to the video on domain and range. To begin with, I've given you the definition for both of these words. Domain you may have heard before as um, the set of x values that you can substitute into a function. I just made it a little bit more clear, I guess you could say. It's really the set of all inputs for which a function is defined. I didn't say x values because sometimes we don't use x as the input. And then for range, a lot of people have said that's the y values. I'm just going to say that the range is the set of all outputs of a function. But when you're looking on a graph, it does make sense a lot of times to think of domain as the x values that are part of the graph and the range as the y values. So let's begin with example number one. So here we have this graph. And the other thing I'm going to say is that when we write down the domain, we always want to use our interval notation whenever possible. So we're going to start from left to right, right? We want to go from least to greatest. So in our domain, we have a few intervals here. In fact, it looks like we have three intervals. Our first interval begins at this value, which is negative three, right? Because we're working on x values. Stops at this, which is at negative two. So I'm going to write down the interval negative three to negative two, including both of those. Then we have a gap here, right? So notice that there are no values um, between negative two and negative one. The next interval starts at negative one. So I'm gonna put a u, include negative one. That goes to this point right here, which is not included. Ah, look at this. Even though our graph has three pieces, this piece right here starts at the x value of 1. So think about it as really one big piece that just has a little gap. I shouldn't even say a gap. That's just a jump in it. So we go from negative 1, we get all these x values. It looks like we're missing this one, but it picks up here. All of these x values right to the end, which is at 3. So we're going to go to 3 but we're not going to include the three. That was a little tricky, so you want to be careful with those. For our range, we're looking at the y values of our graph. So to begin, our lowest y value is at negative two. Now, let's think of it this way. We know the lowest y value is negative two. The highest y value is three, but not including it. Are there any y values in between that are missing? Well, look at this piece. It covers all the values between negative 2 and 1. And this piece covers all the values between the y value of 0 and 3. So I think we've covered everything there. So I'm going, I don't even need to look at the other piece. I'm going to say our range is negative 2, including it, to 3, not including it. All right, this, should, this one should be a lot easier to you. It's just a line, right? So how far left does this go? Well, that would be negative infinity. And how far right does it go? That would be infinity. So another way you could also write the domain of this graph would be all real numbers. Right? So either of these would be acceptable. One is in interval notation, the other is in set notation. And for range, we're looking at the possible y values, or the outputs. Well, this line covers all of the y values from negative infinity to positive infinity. So our range is actually the exact same thing. So lines are pretty easy. Let's try another example. How about a parabola? So our domain, we're looking at our x values. I like to trace it from left to right. We don't have any gaps, and this thing is really going to come all the way from the left and go all the way to the right. So I'm going to say our domain are um, all the real numbers, or I'm going to write that as negative infinity to infinity. Our range is definitely limited, though, because we have a lowest point here. So we're looking at our y values. The lowest y value is at negative 3, but it's going to go up on to infinity. So I'm going to say our range is negative 3, which is included all the way to positive infinity. Okay, how about the domain and range of this scatter plot here? 
Hmm, this one's different, right? Because we don't have any intervals. So when we write the domain for this, we're going to have to write it as a set. So here come my curly cues. And again, I like to write them in order. So domain, we're going to use our x values. So we have negative 3, negative 1, 1, 2, and 3. Excellent. Range, we're just going to list the y values. Again, I like to go in order, so we're going to say negative 2, then this point is at 0 right here, and we have at 1, and then this, notice this one, both of those points have a y value of 2, we're just going to write it once, and our range is done. What else could we possibly do with domain and range? Ah, what if there is no graph? Well, I guess you could make a graph. You know, by graphing, um, by um, substituting some values in, plotting some points, or just using your graphing calculator. But I also think it's a good idea to try to find the domain of something algebraically. So remember that the uh, definition of domain, the set of all possible inputs. What numbers are you allowed to substitute in here for x? Well, you might think, well, I can, you know, substitute anything I want. Okay. I guess you, I mean, you have a point if you're thinking about that. But remember that in a function, your outputs can only be real numbers. So think of it this way. If I were to substitute in 0 for x, that would get me the square root of negative 4. And the square root of negative 4 is not a real number. So I'm not allowed to substitute in 0. Um, would 1 work? Let's see. Uh, that's the square root of negative 3. Nope, that's not good. What about 4? Is this allowed? What's the square root of 0? Well, that's 0. And 0 is a real number. So 4 looks like it's good. Um, 5? That's the square root of 1. That's 1. This looks good. So it looks like we don't want to plug in anything less than 4. So 4 is good. 4.5 would be fine. How about all of the numbers greater than 4 and equal to 4? So my domain is going to be written as an interval for to infinity. So really the breaking point was right here. This was the breaking point. We wanted to see where we got to 0. And that happens a lot with domains. 0 causes some issues. Let's take a look at example 6. So remember that in a fraction, this denominator is not allowed to be 0, right? Or else this is undefined. So what would make it 0? Well, if x was negative 5, right, then we'd have 0. Okay, so we don't want x to be 5. I'm going to write that down. x is not allowed to equal negative 5. So we know that negative 5 can't be in the domain. What if x was negative 4? Well, then the denominator is 1. Great, no problem. What if it was negative 6? Oh, now the denominator is negative 1. Is it okay to be negative this time? Can I have 1 over negative 6 plus 5? Let's see what we get. 1 over negative 1, oh, which is negative 1. There's no issue here. right? So we're looking at two very different examples. Here, on number 6, the denominator can't be 0, but it can be anything else, right? So our domain is every single number except for negative 5. So I'm going to write that as negative infinity to negative 5, not including it, and all the numbers greater than 5, so negative 5 to infinity. So whenever you're dealing, I mean, these are two, again, very specific examples, you really need to think about really what causes issues. If there's, you, I mean, like if I plugged in um, something to x squared, great, I can square any number. Um, that's not going to cause an issue. But you don't want to um, exactly memorize what to do here, but just think about what could cause issues. And we're going to go into this more um, probably after our first day of school. I think this is actually going to be the first night of homework to talk more about these. Um, but in class, yeah, you should definitely be able to do some of um, some examples like these. And I really encourage you to use Khan Academy. Again, if this part is optional, but it could be a really good help to you. So it is time to try your summer assignment.
print that out, try it, check your um, work against the answer key, see if you have any questions. Hopefully you can figure them out on your own or talking to other people. But if not, we will see you in class the first day of school. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Bye.